What's up guys, it's Josh from Cubitechie and today I want to do a quick video talking about a Linux backdoor that's been around for years. So let's get into it. Now, I was searching through my emails and I ran across a, um, one that I missed from a while back and I should have included it in my cyber news video, but I found this article on ZNet uh, and it's about a Linux backdoor that no one detected for a number of years. Now, if we look right here, it says uh, Rhoda Jakura, a Linux backdoor has flown under the radar for years. And like I said, I wanted to just talk about it because I thought it was super cool. You know, I'm the Linux guy or I try to talk about Linux, you know what I'm saying? And so anytime something like this comes up, I try to hop on it right away. But I kind of missed this one. But it says uh, a Linux backdoor recently discovered by researchers has avoided virus total detection since 2018. It says dub Roto Jakuro. The Linux malware has been described by the Kirhu uh, 360 NetLab team as a backdoor tar targeting Linux 64-bit systems. Uh, Roto Jakuru uh, was first detected on March 25th this year. You know when NetLab distributed denial of service botnet C2 command tracking system. Uh, Botmon flagged a suspicious file. At the time of discovery, there were no malware detections on virus total for the file, despite four samples having been uploaded, uh, two in 2018 and one in 2020 and another in 2021. Uh, it says NetLab researcher says the Linux malware changes its use of encryption to fly under the radar, including Zlib uh, compression, uh, in combination with AES, uh, XOR, and key rotation during its activity, such as a obfuscation of command and control C2 uh, server communication. At present, the team says that they do not know the malware's true purpose uh, beyond a focus of compromising Linux systems. Uh, there are 12 functions in total, including X filtration and stealing data uh, file and plugin management, including query, delete, or download, delete, and reporting device information. So that's interesting that it's actually pulling that information like that. Uh, it says, however, the team cites a lack of visibility into the plugins that is preventing a more thorough examination of the malware's overall capability. Uh, NetLab describes the backdoor functions and encryptions as below. And it says at the coding level, uh, Roto Jakiro uses techniques such as the dynamic AES, uh, double layer encryption communication protocol to counteract the binary and network traffic analysis. At the functional level, Roto Jakiro uh, first determines whether the user is root or non root at the runtime. And I thought that was super interesting that it looks at what type of account it's attached to. So if it's a root account or a non root account, uh, you know, it kind of looks at that. And it says uh, with different execution policy for different accounts. So yeah, that's that's crazy right there how it you know it detects it and it executes based on the type of account that it's attached it's atta attached to uh and then it says then decrypts uh relevant sensitive resources using aes and rotate for subsequent uh persistence um process recording and single instance use and finally, establishing communications with C2 and waits for the execution of commands issued by C2. And that's, that was another crazy part about it while reading it. It basically, depending on what type of account, well, it doesn't matter what account. It looks like it spins up two instances um, and then tie themselves together, like bind them together. So if one of the accounts is, you know, taken offline or whatever, uh, 
then it still has connection to the system via the other instance so super cool that they you know wrote it that way uh it's just a way of having persistence you know what i'm saying so in addition rotojuku uh will treat roots and non-users on compromised systems differently and will change its persistence method depending on which account exists so like i was saying earlier for example, when running under root account, a new process may be created to automatically respawn configuration files, whereas in a non-root scenario, two separate processes are created to monitor and if necessary, restore each other. Yeah, so that's the part that I read earlier when I was reading this article. Uh, you can, They can restore each other, you know, if something happens, if, if necessary uh, for non-root accounts. So that's crazy right there. Uh, it says NetLab has NetLab has also suggested links to Tori Botnet due to some coding similarities in the commands and traffic management. So they think that it may have some ties to this botnet right here, the Tori Botnet, um, because of the similarities. They always, you know, try to analyze the code and the coding style uh, and try to tie it to other malware or botnet anything that's out there they try to tie it to uh at the time of writing six out of 61 vt engines now detect the backdoors files as malicious uh further analysis can be found at the in tether so go down and check that out if you want some more information on this actual um backdoor for Linux systems, you know what I'm saying? Just get get a little bit more information about it. I just kind of wanted to hit on the main points and make you guys aware of this type of backdoor that's just been sitting out there for years. Uh, it's just crazy how something like this has been sitting around. No one has actually found it. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And go down and leave a comment. I want to hear your thoughts on this actual Linux backdoor and what you think about it. But go on and share the video and of course, keep it taking.